You might think that trigonometry is limited to just triangles and circles. However, it is much more than that. Multiplying numbers may seem to be something completely unrelated, but it turns out that trigonometry can be used to multiply, and in some cases, it takes quicker to multiply than long multiplication. But before we get into the maths of it all, let's take a quick dive into the historical context. In the 15th century, technological advances such as the magnetic compass allowed for more sea travel, allowing for travel in the open ocean, contrary to the coastal areas which could only be explored before. As a result, navigation became increasingly more important but also more computational because in the open ocean, there are no visual cues from the coastal areas which could guide those navigators. Without the coast, what they used instead was the position of astronomical bodies at known times to determine their position and where they are heading. And in order to do this, navigators used spherical trigonometry, which involves triangles on spheres which was useful because, surprise surprise, we live on a sphere. So on this diagram here, the inner sphere is the Earth, and the outer sphere is the sky above us, or the celestial sphere. One identity that was often used was the spherical law of cosines, relating angles to sides of a spherical triangle. So, if you know all the quantities in the formula but one, you can obtain that quantity by multiplying, adding, dividing, and using a trigonometric table. For example, if we want to find the side A, we can take the arc cos of both sides, and then we would have to multiply cos B by cos C and then add it to the other quantity. But note here that multiplying cos B by cos C is harder than you might think. And well, it is because quantities like these often have many decimal places. So in this example, 0 0.7162 times blah blah blah, and people were lazy to use long multiplication. So mathematicians, maybe inspired by the trigonometry used in navigation, found a creative solution to multiply. That is, they applied the product to some identity. And for those who don't know what this identity is, it comes from the angle sum identity and angle difference identity and by adding the two, we can cancel out the sine A sine B, leaving only cos A cos B times 2. So dividing by 2 will give the identity. Okay, so it might seem as though this is completely unrelated to numeric multiplication, but it is not. And I will show you how it works with the example of 2.924 times 5.446. First note that the range of cos is negative 1 to 1 inclusive, so we must turn our product to be something of that range, which can be uh, done by extracting out the tens here, so multiplying everything by 100 to obtain 0 0.2924 and 0 0.5446, which is in the range of the cosine function. And because it is in the range of the cosine function, we know that there must be an angle A and an angle B that equals that uh, number. So in the simplest form, we have that A is equal to R cos 0 0.2924 and B is equal to the R cos of 0 0.5446. Now we turn to the trigonometric table to find these angles. So note here that the first column shows the values for the angles and the third column shows the cosine of that angle. So here we want 0 0.2924 which turns out to correspond to the angle 73 degrees. And for the other value, it turns out to be 57 degrees. So we now know what A and B are. And we can apply the product to some identity. 
So substituting A and B in and simplifying cos 130 to be negative cos 50 because that is the range of the angles for this trigonometric table. And now looking it up again, so for 16 degrees, we see that it is equal to 0 0.9613 and for 50 degrees, it is equal to 0 0.6428. Substituting this back in, we are left with a simple addition problem, which is then halved. Evaluating that gives 0 0.15925. And because cos 73 is equal to 0 0.2924 and cos B is equal to 0 0.5446, we have that 2.924 times 5.446 is equal to 0 0.1595 times 100, which is 15.925, and that is it. However, the journey of multiplying does not end here. 20 years later, Napier came along and discovered a better method, namely using logarithms and the product rule.